Welcome to the Cyber Wars Capture the Flag competition, a first of its kind as a new eSport. This prototype will demonstrate a visualization as a data-driven conflict that shows six teams with six individual cyber athletes each. Seven separate attacks will be shown, each attempting to compromise one of nine separate services. Okay, here we are early in the game where we see a lot of teams doing network scanning. This is pretty common for early in a match. Uh, we see each team probing the other team's networks, looking for vulnerabilities or points of access. Let's take a look at the InfoSec team. These guys were DEF CON 2017 champions and they're the ones to watch. Notice Larry, the team captain, was also MVP two years in a row. His reversing and defensive skills are legendary. Looks like the InfoSec team is already busy patching LDAP, HTTPS, and Kerberos binaries. Notice that green stream element below the binary? That's the availability rating of the service. When the patches are complete, we'll see if 100% is restored. Oh look, that LDAP patch degraded the service by 50%. That's going to cost them some points. The other patches look good though. Let's skip ahead to the final minutes of the competition. Here in the end game, we see everyone attacking everyone else. Most binaries have been patched multiple times, although new binaries do get published every so often, so each team is constantly doing both offense and defense. A quick word about attack. The yellow flares are brute force attacks. Those are pretty common as you can see. The green flares are mostly misconfiguration exploits. The red flares are unintended data exposure exploits. Red lasers are SQL injections. Green lasers, application fuzzing, and those missiles you see flying around are remote code execution attacks. The green dot swarms are DOS attacks or denial of service, and those are pretty rare in these competitions. Those bright flashes with the explosion sound are flags captured. It's not surprising we're seeing those with this many attacks happening at once. Let's take a moment to turn off all the attacks and just review each team's binary status. Here we see Ethersec, the green team, is almost fully patched except for that RDP service. Looking at the blue Tyler team, we see three vulnerabilities, that DNS, Kerberos and their MySQL service. That's pretty dangerous for them. It's going to cost them some points. The purple zero day team is fully patched except for that LDAP. They're looking good with 100% service availability across the board too. Here we see InfoSec, the red team, has their SMB and RDP unpatched, but otherwise they're looking pretty strong. Okay, the orange not a number team looks pretty good too with only SMB and SSH unpatched. But notice both the maps empty and DNS services are only 50% available. Finally, the yellow whereas team has five binaries unpatched. That's really dangerous at this stage of the game. We'll likely see them scramble to patch, but I don't know if they've got enough time to make it up. Let's take a look at the scoreboard and see where things are. Wow, looks like Ethersec and InfoSec are in first and second by quite a bit. Zero Day in third place has a chance, but I don't see how anyone else could win this thing. Really interesting to look back over the competition and see who was ahead at various stages. Since this looks like it might be a two-horse race, let's scope out all the other teams and focus in on just InfoSec and Ethersec and the attacks they're trading back and forth. Now let's have a look at third place zero day. Okay, services look pretty good. Fully patched. They do have a couple at 50%, which isn't ideal, but they've been playing a great defensive game. Here's the team card for Ethersec, the current leader. Ethersec's a really interesting team. They've been focused on offense and it's been serving them well. 
Here you see the team makeup and how they actually have three attackers, which is unusual. Notice their total flags captured and their total service uptimes are both quite high. Uh-oh, looks like there's been a penalty. Zero Day was performing a routine scan and it looks like they hit the out of bounds error. So this kind of penalty is going to cost them a player. That's a 30 minutes in the penalty box for Jonak. With only a few minutes left in the match, this is really going to hurt Zero Day. Wow, it looks like even without a player, Zero Day is patching their SSH service. This was a really difficult to detect exploit. Okay, check this out. Those red dots circling that patch indicate that it has a back door. If any other team takes that patch, they'll be opening themselves up for attack. Brilliant move by Zero Day. Okay, the match is almost over. Let's take a look at the current leaderboard. Not a ton of changes from before, but we can see some movement. Okay, looks like everyone just got new LDAT binaries, and Ethersec has patched theirs first. Now that early mover advantage means they can attack everyone else's open LDAT. Yep, that's exactly what they're going to do. Wow, look at that. Zero Day was the only one to defend against this attack from Ethersec. They used a network level block too. We haven't seen that in a while. Great move by Zero Day. Wow, they got four flags with that move. This is the athlete who made that attack. Her name is Mecco. She's legendary and a real fan favorite. Also notice she's the MVP of her team. Oh, this is interesting. We have our first network infiltration. InfoSec has gotten into the RDP server of the Ethersec team. That red building indicates the attacker has root privileges and they're now moving to the SMB machine. No flags gained yet. Perhaps they're moving on to that vulnerable LDAP. Yes, they're making a clear move to the LDAP, but it was blocked. Wow, what a move by Ethersec. Looks like the InfoSec team will not be getting that LDAP flag today. So this is interesting. Ethersec shut them down for now, but it looks like InfoSec is still hiding inside their network. Will there be time for them to score with this strategy? Okay, with only 30 seconds left, we're seeing everyone just firing off all kinds of attacks left and right. But that Zero Day team is really hammering. Day is unloading everything they've got and they're getting flags left and right. This is amazing. This could be an amazing upset. They only need six flags to pull into first and win this thing. Can they do it? That's it. They did it. Zero Day are the champions. Okay, let's take a look at the winning team's stats. What a performance. What an amazing clutch move. They played defensively the whole time and then threw everything they had at the last minute pulling ahead. What an amazing competition and thanks to everyone for joining us. We'll see you again next year.